So, I'm gonna start here by just giving a brief overview of the four categories. And like I said uh, in the opening of this, of this group, um, the four categories is a, it's really a translation in the context of social noting for what's called in the early Buddhist tradition, the four foundations of mindfulness. And um, I've worked with that traditional um, map and model before. I very highly recommend checking it out if you're interested, uh, if you're just kind of geeky in that way. Um, and I, in working with it and studying it, I found that there are some aspects of it, particularly in the fourth foundation of mindfulness, what's called dharmas, the mindfulness of dharmas, that it ends up being a little bit confusing and I'd say not so practical or pragmatic for most practitioners. Um, to be introduced to that because it requires a whole lot of background knowledge and reading and understanding of the whole kind of Buddhist uh, model. Um, whereas uh, when we talk about the four categories in terms of body sensations, charge, mind states, and thoughts, although some of those words may not immediately make sense, like charge, for instance, like what does that mean? Um, for the most part, I think these are fairly easily understood by anyone. Um, without having to have a kind of big Buddhist background. So that's part of the reason that Kenneth and I've opted to use these categories, which has found it a little bit more um, pedagogically useful and practical. Um, and so um, in terms of building off of what we did last week and what we're doing here in this training, you know, we, we started with the six senses. We started with this very basic and simple model of understanding the whole of our experience in terms of these six basic elements of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching slash feeling for the fifth sense, the body sense, and thinking for the sixth sense, the mind. And today what we're gonna do, and as we go through these categories, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these six senses and we're basically gonna unfurl them, unpack them, and find a lot of different ways to notice how uh, those six senses actually present in our experience, the different kind of granularity in which they, they present themselves, and the different combinations, uh, the ways that they come together to form more complex type experiences. So with this first category of body sensations, we're going to be basically taking that fifth sense, uh, what we're noting as touching or feeling, and we're gonna be expanding that and exploring some of the different um, ways in which that fifth sense actually um, can be noticed, again, with more specificity, more granularity um, in our own experiences. In the second category, we're going to uh, take really what we're experiencing in that body sense, and we're gonna kind of notice that every body sensation has a kind of charge to it, has a kind of valence to it, a kind of uh, pleasant, unpleasant, or neither unpleasant or uh, pleasant tone to it or quality to it. And we're going to uh, work on noticing that in addition to whatever it is that we're sensing. So we're gonna be able to start to notice the charge of experience using the body sensations as our kind of uh, way into that. And then with the third category of mind states, what we're gonna be doing in a way is taking a look at how all of these different six senses come together to form all kinds of different states of consciousness, uh, how they come together to form what we normally call our emotions, what we would normally call our moods, these sort of subtle states that we're kind of feeling through, uh, what we might call our attitudes, you know, how we're relating to our experience. Uh, again, these kind of can, can be quite difficult to detect and almost invisible sometimes unless we t tune into them and become aware of them and can notice them. And then with thoughts, we're taking the sixth sense, the mind sense, and we're uh, expanding that in the fourth category. We're going to be looking at all the different ways that we can notice thoughts, um, the different ways that thought, present, thought presents itself in our experience. And one thing I think is really important to, to highlight here in working through these different categories and expanding the, our capacity to note with more clarity and more precision is that we're starting with the most obvious sensations for most people, the body. These are sensations which are much easier to tune into. They're more 
uh, in a way more foundational, you could say, or they're more obvious or they're more um, gross. Not gross in the sense of like, eh, gross, but gross in the sense of heavy and present. Um, and then as we move up through these categories, we're moving really from more gross, more obvious sensations to more subtle and more difficult to detect experiences. So charge is a little bit harder to notice for most people than body sensations. It's something that seems to be baked in to the experience of a body sensation, but not something we always notice very easily. Sometimes we're just reacting to the charge of experience. Oh, there's aching, it's unpleasant, and then we're moving. We're already getting up and trying to, to move away from the unpleasant sensation without necessarily even noticing that it's unpleasant. Um, and then mental states, mind states, these are even more subtle because, in a way, because they involve and include the mind, uh, this mental sense, which is uh, very much the hardest one to detect for most people. It's very difficult to notice our, our subtle thoughts, um, subtle uh, beliefs that are operating and, and, and narratives that are being constructed in the mind moment to moment to moment. Um, and the fourth category of thoughts is the most subtle in this model, um, the most difficult to detect. And so we're moving again from the most gross to the most subtle. And in a way we start with the most obvious and the most gross because we want to be able to build our skill, our capacity to notice as we move up to the more subtle sensations to gradually be able to open to thought and have a good chance at noticing it because we've been training our attention, noticing the body, noticing these charges, noticing the mental states. Um, and so, so that's part of the reason for this kind of movement. 